Oof. Hey guys, it's Harpreet. Well, you guys was wondering that it would be someone else. Someone that you used to see on this channel. But the joke is on you. He's not coming here. Or maybe he is. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Amrit. Welcome to his channel, Amrit's YouTube channel. So this <laughs> is his second vlog. And we have a few questions for Amrit written down on here that we're gonna ask. And I have answers. Whoa, you already got some answers. Yep. All right, Amrit, so what is the purpose of this video? So this video is to help you understand what is the exposure triangle? All right, well, I don't know what's that, honestly. And I did for sure read your article and I guess that's what you're holding right yeah. now. All right, sorry, wait. The exposure triangle that you're doing, is it for just Canon cameras or it can be used with whatever camera your, uh, your, you know, your viewers have? Any camera as long as, as long as it has manual mode. So you mean even the latest S20 Plus? Yep can do it well that's that's amazing well guys if you want to see more of most more of me and Amrit interacting go check out my channel well back to Amrit the first thing we're gonna talk about is shutter speed now shutter speed is kungano kabilis na open and closing shutter sa loob ng camera. Now, that's the shutter speed. Usually, it's in fractions pag nakikita nyo sa, sa loob ng camera nyo. Let's focus. And shutter speed controls light that's coming in your camera and how your camera sees motion. So, the faster the shutter speed, the lesser light is gonna come into your camera kasi it was only open for a shorter period of time. Shutter speed is slower then mas maraming ilo ang papasok sa loob ng camera resulting in a brighter image because it was open for a longer period of time now how shutter speed sees motion is for example this photo right here pag tumatakbo siya so kung gusto ko siyang sharp kailangan kong mas mabilis na shutter speed at least yung mas mabilis kaysa sa kanya but if i want to get yung tinatawag nating motion blur habang tumatakbo siya kailangan natin ng mas mab bagal na shutter speed maybe around 1 over 50 something like that just a quick note pag mas mabagal ang shutter speed kailangan yung mas maiging hawakan yung camera para hindi ma-introduce yung camera shake sa loob ng image pag may camera shake blurred yung image and that's why pag naglo-long exposure sa mga photographers especially pag um, astrophotography picture nila stars they use tripod or nilagay nila sa isang place yung camera para hindi gumalaw during the exposure. Next up is the aperture. Now, unlike shutter speed, the aperture is depending on the lens na gagamitin nyo, hindi sa camera. And while shutter speed is expressed in seconds, aperture naman is expressed in f-stop numbers. So you may have seen numbers like f1.8, f4, or f5.6. And then aperture is like opening or closing sa loob ng lens nyo. Makikita nyo may malit na butas na gumagalaw dun pag changing aperture so it controls the light that's coming in your camera and also the depth of field firstly yung light mo na pag-usapan natin kung mas mataas ang f-stop number something like f6.3 or f11 mas maliit yung opening sa loob ng camera that means mas konting ilo na papasok resulting in a darker image pero pag mas maliit yung f-stop number something like f1.8 mas malaking opening sa loob ng lens and that means mas maraming ilo ang papaso. Now how aperture controls depth of field. Firstly, depth of field is kung gaano ka laki yung area na naka-focus from the front to the back of the image. So for example, yung camera ko naka-set ngayon sa f4. So yung depth of field niyan medyo nasa gitna. Nakikita niyo yung out of focus yung background then pag naglagay ako something sa harap out of focus din siya. So pag mas maliit yung number, mas shallow yung depth of field. Meaning, mas konti yung area na naka-focus from front to back. That's why pag ginagamit yung aperture like f1.8 for portraits, 
mas separated yung subject pag nakafocus na kanya kaysa sa background. Mas blurry yung background. Pag mas matas naman yung f-stop number, mas malaki yung area na nakafocus from front to back. And usually, ginagamit to sa landscape kasi gusto nilang sharp lahat, like in focus lahat from foreground, midground to background. That's why they use apertures like 6.3 or even f11. And kung tatanungin nyo naman kung bakit pag mas maliit yung number, mas malaking opening sa loob ng lens or vice versa. Hindi ko sure kung tama to, pero what I've read from the past is di ba pag notice yung f-stop number is f slash 1.8 and you sh I think it's a formula f yung focal length nyo. For example, we have the 50mm 1.8 na lens so pag nakaset siya sa aperture na 1.8 it's 50 Div slash meaning divided by 1.8 so pag mas maliit yung number na nagde divide sa 50 mas malaking result and I think the result is the diameter or radius ng opening sa loob ng lens but I'm not sure yun yung nabasa ko that's why pag mas maliit yung number mas malaking opening sa loob ng lens now lastly the last part of the exposure triangle is the ISO I don't know the meaning of ISO pero it's how sensitive your camera, specifically the camera sensor, is to light. So it usually makita yung numbers na ISO 100, 200, 400, 800, or 1600. It also controls kung gaano ka bright or dark yung image nyo. Pag mas mataas yung ISO number around like, for example, 6400, mas sensitive yung camera sa light. So mas bright yung image na magka makikita nyo. But with the cost of noise or grain. Pwede nyo isipin yung ISO as fake light. Pag ginawa nyo lahat for shutter speed and aperture, dark pa rin yung image. Doon magiging malaking tuloy yung ISO. Pero magingat lang tayo kasi habang mas tinataas natin yung ISO, mas maraming grain or noise yung napapasok sa image. But if that's the style you're going for, then go for it and pag mas mababa naman yung ISO syempre mas dark yung image but mas clean there's no noise no grain mas sharp nang mas 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 sharp siyang tingnan usually um dito rin binibase yung low light performance ng isang camera for example kahit itaas mo yung ISO niya nang like 66400 mga ganun and wala pa rin masyadong ini-introduce na grain that means good yung low light performance ng camera but like pag nilagay mo ka mapalang sa 400 may noise at grain na nakikita ang visible that means pangit yung low light performance ng camera and that's basically it for ISO na pag-usapan naman natin um, mga example situations kung kailan magiging helpful yung tatlong settings na to or in general kung bakit it's helpful to know manual mode now the first situation is so matakbo yung subject nyo and you need to freeze the motion with a shallow depth of field. So gusto nyo yung um, blurred yung background nya. So kailangan nyo ng mas mabilis na shutter speed. Something like F, oh sorry, 1 over 500 or 1 over 1000. And depende sa lens nyo, ideally for example 50mm 1.8, iset natin sa 1.8 para shallow yung depth of field. Mas blurred yung background. And Siyempre kung set natin sa 1.8, mas maraming ilaw papasok. So we compensate that with the shutter speed. Tataasan lang natin. Kasi pag mas mabilis yung shutter speed, mas konting ilaw ang papasok. Balancing act. The next situation is, parang itong sinut ko noon sa San Fernando City. Tumasa ako sa overpass. And gusto ko sarang picturean yung cars top down. Gusto ko ng konting motion blur. Para makikita ng konting movement na gumagalaw yung cars on a bright sunny day. Now, para makuha ko yung motion blur, kagaya ng pinag-usapan natin kanina, I need a slower shutter speed. So, used around like 1 over 30 seconds. Since bright yung day, and then mababa yung sh uh, mabagaling shutter speed ko. So, overexposed ng image. That's why I need to bump up my aperture around like f8 or f6.3 para mag-compensate sa shutter speed. And that's how I got yung proper exposure for the image. And lastly, um, a portrait situation naman in a dark place so kunyari na 50mm 1.8 lens kayo and then you want to shoot a portrait in a dark place sinet nyo na 1.8 then sinet nyo na, na yung shutter speed nyo na kaya ng kamay nyo ng walang shape and dark pa rin yung image
dito na papasok yung tulong ng ISO. So, siyempre, you are handheld. Naka F1.8 na. And underexposed pa rin yung image. Kailangan nyo nang taasan yung ISO nyo with the cost of adding grain. Now, those are parang example situations kung how those three settings work together. Quick recap, shutter speed, dito yung kung gaano kabilis na go pin and close yung shutter sa loob ng camera. And it's usually expressed in seconds. Kung mas mabilis yung shutter speed, mas konting ilaw ang papasok. Kung mas mabaga lang shutter speed, mas, ma mas bright yung image kasi mas maraming ilaw ang papasok. For apertures, the opening inside your lens, pag mas mataas yung f-stop number, mas maliit yung opening sa loob ng lens. That means mas konting ilaw na papasok. Pag mas mababa yung f-stop number, something like f1.8, mas malaki yung opening sa loob ng camera. That means mas maraming ilaw na papasok sa loob ng camera. Lastly, ISO, you can consider this as fake light. Pag ginawa nyo lahat for shutter speed and aperture, dark pa rin yung image, dito maging mal malaking tulong yung ISO. Kung mas mataas ang ISO number, mas bright ang image, pero mas maraming noise or grain. Pag mas mababa naman, mas dark yung image, pero mas malinis, sharper, no noise or grain. And then, if may tanong kayo, just ask me, and then if Hindi nyo pa rin masyadong naiintindihan. Oh my God. So that was it for today's video. Sana naiintindihan nyo yung mga sinasabi ko. If not, I made the blog post about this few months ago. So if you learned better by reading, pwede nyo siyang basahin. Like down. It's linked down below. And then, pag naging malaking tulong to sa inyo, please do share and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.